Well, I've decided to um, put my old Ostro Daimler road bike back on the road. This bike I purchased in 1981, I think, in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, rode it for about a year or so, and then uh, it just sat and collected dust. In fact, it was so dusty I had to rinse it off. Uh, it was kind of a brown color with all the dust on it, and I rinsed it off because I couldn't even touch it without getting my hands and my clothes all dirty. This is not the best road bike in the world, of course. Um, Ostro Daimler made really good road bikes for the day. It's a very strong frame. I think some sort of a steel alloy. Sorry, I don't know. As you can see, my handlebar tape is falling off. My um, brick lever hoods, I believe they're called, are all cracking and falling apart. My uh, tires are... Uh, course need to be replaced along with the tubes are all cracking and falling apart lots of uh, surface dirt and some rust um, some uh, wasps have uh, made a home underneath my seat I need to clean that out of course If they were to come out uh, chase me down the road, maybe it'd make me go extra fast. There's another uh, view of my uh, old tires that are falling apart. 27 by um, 1 and uh, an eighth. I removed the pedals years ago, which was fortunate, because at one point I uh, had this thing underneath the deck of the house and uh, someone wanted to steal it and seeing that the pedals were missing they threw the bike down and left so anyways I've ordered tires brake levers I need to retake the handlebar I need to true this front wheel it's got a slight wobble about two millimeters and when it's when you spin it um, None of the spokes are bent or broken, so I'm thinking if we uh, just tighten them up to their where they're supposed to be, it should get rid of that. As this uh, cleanup and restoration uh, progresses, I'll uh, make uh, more and more uh, videos. I'm not uh, uh, up on the current bike terminology. So I may call things by the wrong name, and, but that's okay. To tell you the truth, I don't really have a clue where to start. So I decided I'll start by cleaning up the chain. Uh, there's a lot of uh, surface rust on this old chain. Uh, I believe much, if not all of it, will clean off with my wire brush. I've decided to spray some lubricant on here and uh, use my wire brush and see uh, how well this chain cleans up. Lubricant that I've uh, decided to use is the uh, TriFlow uh, Superior Lubricant Spray, which I purchased at my local bike shop. Interestingly enough, the same bike shop I bought this bike at, uh, bought, bought this bike from back in 1981. They've since moved uh, to a different location, but it's the, the same store. I paid $12.99 for this nice little can of lubricant. Well, I'll spend a few minutes trying to scrub this poor chain. Um, as you can see, I still got a little ways to go. Uh, when I started, my tensioner here was uh, so stiff, it wouldn't uh, keep the uh, chain tensioned. So after I cleaned that up, there's some old dried up hard grease in there. Um, it now keeps the chain taut like it's supposed to. Not really sure uh, which step would be uh, next or best to go to next, but I've decided to remove this kickstand and clean it up. Lightweight aluminum kickstand, which I uh, 
we moved uh, Bling Racing 14 millimeter inch. We'll take it off and clean it up. Well, there we go. Kickstand's been removed. Um, of course, I need to degrease it, and uh, then after that, I'll see if I can clean up the surface of the um, aluminum alloy that this is made out of. I degreased the kickstand. I still got a long ways to go here because the metal's a little on the surface is pitted. It's made by Greenfield. Made in USA, which is kind of interesting because the bike is from Austria. It makes me think it was imported without the kickstand and it was added by the, by the dealer who sold it to me. Anyways, that project is about one third of the way towards completion. And then uh, next will come these pedals here. These are made in France, it says on them. So, clean those up, see what I can do with those. These, of course, are not uh, expensive pedals, but uh, they're uh, made out of some sort of aluminum alloy, so they're, they're the steel. Uh, call this axle it gives it some weight but there's nice and strong I cleaned the wasp nest out from underneath the bottom of my seat um, the wasps that were in there were dead all right I guess uh, for lack of knowing what else what I should do next I'm just gonna get this uh, soapy water in a rag scrub this frame down and everything I'll be using some metal polish on uh, various parts and there'll be some disassembly that's going to occur of course and lubrication. So, so far uh, no disassembly has taken place other than removal of the um, kickstand. The pedals were already off but I've cleaned the frame and uh, it's slowly looking better and better. I don't know if you can see it but I have some overspray on my bike the white stuff there doesn't wipe off uh, it took me a while a minute or so to remember how that happened back in 1993 maybe 92 I lived in an apartment complex and uh, there were some guys hired to paint the railings and the fence and it was a windy day and they were spraying paint anyway, so they got overspray on uh, a few dozen cars, my bike included. A close up of my Weinman uh, brake levers, which I need to replace. This bike also has an old, it probably doesn't work anymore, but an old VETA odometer, speedometer that uh, was uh, activated by a signal that came up this wire here. It's now broken from uh, the sensor and then the little magnet there. So as it spins, a signal is uh, created and uh, that pulse goes up this wire to the old better unit which is uh, nowhere near the stuff that's available today. The reason I'm wanting to uh, fix this bike up is because my uh, boy's got this bike over here, a uh, Yeti 575 that um, wants me to go riding with him. Uh, this is a uh, mountain or a trail bike of course which means there's lots of places he can go that I can't. I should be able to accomplish uh, cleaning this bike up. I am uh, pretty well acquainted with uh, restoration of old stuff. It's an old 1972 Firebird there. And over here, 74 uh, Trans Am that I uh, restored. The uh, tires I'm planning on putting on this bike are the uh, Kenda 27 by one and a quarter. 
this is a an eighth of an inch off what's on there now which means there's a sixteenth on either side that's different as far as I understand this bike is able to accommodate 27 by 1 and an eighth all the way up to 27 by 1 and a quarter that's the way I understand it the, uh, of course I need new tubes it's a standard uh, Schrader valve on this old bike and tubes I'm uh, going to put on here are the 700. Uh, that's a designation that didn't exist back in my day. Uh, it's 27 by one and a quarter. There again, or 27, I'm sorry, by one and an eighth to one and a quarter. I guess that means that is the uh, um, size of a uh, um, tire it's able to be used on. So uh, that should work just fine if I have a just a sixteenth of an inch discrepancy on either side between what I had and what I'm going to put in here. That should work okay. These were uh, $6.99 each and I think the tire is about 20 bucks for each one. I decided the uh, next uh, thing I'll do is um, I'll clean these wheels up. There's some very minor uh, pitting with the metal and then it's kind of tarnished so it should be kind of a, um, a slight crumb like look to it so I've removed the uh, front wheel and I've already started this process I've cleaned the sides there a little bit and uh, another thing I noticed was um, with the wheel on the bike it spins freely but when I take it off, I spin this uh, axle. Uh, it feels like the uh, bearings are dry. So I need to um, remove this with the proper wrench, take it apart, clean it, inspect my bearings and races, and hopefully just put grease in and put it back together. All right. So I've done some uh, clean up on this front uh, wheel or rim removed most of the uh, tarnish from the surface and uh, I have yet to take apart the, uh, the bearings there. I need a tool. I guess there's a specific tool for that. I think it's called a cone wrench. I don't have one. I'm going to go pick one up because I need to do this correctly, not damage anything. Take that apart, clean it, inspect it, and uh, uh, re-grease it, put it back together, hoping I don't need to replace anything. All right, I removed the uh, axle and the bearings are in here getting cleaned. Um, for as rough as the uh, bearings felt when I turned the wheel holding on the axle. I mean, they look pretty clean. I haven't inspected them yet because I need to clean them first. And there was grease in there. So we'll clean it up and check everything. Check the races and the bearings. Put it back together and see if it's nice and smooth. I think I've reached about the extent of what I'm able to do with this uh, front wheel here. I put the bearing back together, the axle and the bearings in the races back together and the best I can determine what the problem was before was uh, I think the factory uh, over tightened the races just slightly because it's real smooth now all the uh, bearings were in good shape the races were fine so I just reused them uh, the next step is I will clean up the, the crank here and uh, see what I can do with that I've already started this process with the uh, other side. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, I previously uh, said that I thought there was some minor pitting on this metal, but as I've cleaned it up, I didn't find any pits. Rather, the surface is just kind of rough. So that's uh, actually um, what I wanted to find. I've uh, moved indoors for my uh, final assembly. 
the front wheel, as you can see, has uh, been cleaned up. It's been reinstalled with the uh, new uh, Kenda 35 tire on it. I have finished cleaning this part right here. That I, I tend to call a crank. Um, I don't know if that's what modern bikers call it. My uh, kickstand has been uh, cleaned up and that's ready to install. Pedals, they've been cleaned up, they're ready to go back on. So uh, um, I still have to do the handlebars as you see. We did install the new levers and the tape and uh, we will see if uh, I can get this uh, bike on the road uh, in the next 24 hours. I've cleaned up the, uh, I guess you call it the shifter. Uh, took a little bit of work, but it's all cleaned up and lubricated. And seems to be moving freely and uh, that's ready to go. On closer inspection, I noticed that uh, one of my brake cables was, had some cracks in it. And then, uh, the one for the rear brakes was, was sticking, so I decided that uh, since I had it, this thing sort of apart, I'd have uh, new brake cables installed. Uh, I went to my local bike shop and they said they could just do that for me, and it was pretty cheap, so I thought I'd let them just go ahead and do that for me. They also um, retaped my handlebars, as you can see. The original handlebar tape was a kind of an off-white sort of like a cloth looking tape which I really liked felt good and looked really good um, problem was is uh, it got dirty with uh, uh, use you know from from the hands so I decided out of all the colors that were available black is the only one that really probably looked decent I still have my original uh, brake levers uh, but I had these uh, Tektro and brake levers installed. They allow the cable to come out uh, on the side here horizontally rather than vertically up here so that kind of cleans up the appearance of the handlebars of the bike. I do remember getting my hands caught in those uh, cables a couple times when I was moving the bike around so I thought well I'll just go with this uh, new I guess updated setup and I had the, the Guys at the bike shop wrapped these handlebars for me. I figured I could probably uh, do a pretty decent job in uh, wrapping tape on handlebars after a couple, two, three tries, but um, uh, this is sort of an artistic endeavor of sorts, so I had them do that for me. And uh, there you go. I'm starting to get used to the look of the black on my handlebars because, like I said, I had that light colored tape on there before which I actually prefer but this is growing on me and I really do like how the uh, cables instead of coming up and down being in my way occasionally come across this way uh, horizontally and down. I had uh, disassembled, cleaned, uh, put in new grease and re reassembled the, the front bearings and uh, got really good results there. The back one, I think, requires a bike-specific uh, tool. I'm sure I could have tracked that tool down, spent some money, and just done this myself. It really doesn't look very complicated at all. But my bike was at the bike shop, and the guys there seemed eager to work on an old Austro Daimler. They said they don't see them come in very often, but usually when they do, I, he told me they're usually pretty clean looking and in good condition so I had them go ahead and uh, disassemble this and clean it up and and uh, put new grease in there and put it back together for me so with that I uh, installed my kickstand that I cleaned up that uh, really you'd seen that had it's all dirty and sort of tarnished and uh, the bikes all back together and ready to go but I only have one problem it's winter time so my uh, opportunities for uh, riding are going to be kind of few and far between although I did 
ride it with my boy up to his school and back uh, this afternoon. Uh, the roads were melted enough that I um, was able to do that. Back to my old VETA um, odometer and speedometer. I haven't uh, um, purchased a new battery for this. Um, I know it's pretty archaic compared to the things available today. However, just for kicks, uh, I can find out for a couple bucks if it still works by putting a new battery in it. If it does, I'll use it just for fun. It's really all that I need. Um, it's got that overspray on it that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's on the bike. Uh, there's more overspray on this than uh, anywhere else on the bike. Uh, on the topic of overspray, I've decided that uh, um, it's really not that visible. And on top of that, when I was cleaning my bike or when I'm handling it, I notice it's slowly coming off. So I decided to not to um, go after any specific uh, overspray remover activities. As you can see here, it's coming off just by rubbing my finger on it. It'll just uh, come off in time. I didn't want to damage these little delicate looking uh, decals on here. I'm going to try and scrub overspray off. So the journey uh, putting this old road back uh, back on the road was uh, kind of interesting and fairly uncomplicated and it was a fun one. So, but uh, the snow is going to uh, not allow me to uh, really put any miles on this thing. I'm going to have to wait until February or March. Right now we're at the first part of December.